Today's video is not exactly what it was supposed to be on. Uh, essentially, everything that could have gone wrong did, and here we are. But, um, I've been meaning to make this video, as I said I was going to, I think, in a previous video. And, uh, you know, we've been using it, well, we used it in the Scython video that went out last week, and we're going to be using it in more videos coming up. So I thought that I would talk about a benchmarking system, a very simple benchmarking system, that you can use in Python called Timeit. Now this is part of the standard library, so we don't have to install everything. All we have to do is do from, uh, I'm not focused on the right window, there we go, from uh, Timeit import Timeit. I, don't, I actually don't know if the Timeit module has anything else. Uh, but I've never needed to use anything else, so I don't know. But this time it function is what we can use to benchmark our code. So the time it module is useful for evaluating the performance of code snippets, usually with the intention of comparing them to alternative implementations. So if there's anything that you're you know thinking about and you don't know which way is the faster out of two that you have in your head, what you can do is you can just kind of create a function or something, or if it's a one-liner, just put it in straight up and use the timeit function to kind of generate a performance output. And the good thing about the timing function is that you can kind of eliminate anomalies or outliers uh, by running the test multiple times, but we'll get into that when we actually talk about the function. So the actual function itself returns a time, which we're gonna call T1 in this case, because we're gonna be doing multiple of these, we're actually gonna be comparing something. And I'm gonna do the timeit function here. And then let's talk about the stuff that it takes. So the code statement is the actual code itself. So this is the code you're going to be analyzing, the code you're going to be timing. The setup, uh, we're not going to be exploring that in the first two examples, but we will talk about it, is essentially any setup necessary for the code to run. The timer we don't really need. This is just passing custom timer objects, although we, as far as I can tell, we never need to do this. I can't think of a use case we'd ever need to do it, so you don't need to worry about that. The number is the number of times that the statement will be run um, to get you know the overall time. And the globals are essentially used for passing any variables through into it as a dictionary. In this case, we're gonna be comparing the fastest way to apply um, an operation element-wise. In this case, we're gonna be squaring numbers. Uh, we're not gonna be doing it in NumPy, we're just gonna be doing pure Python, obviously, but this is just kind of an example, so I think you can understand. Uh, so we're going to actually supply some values here, and we're just going to have a list of a range of 1 to 1001. So this is basically creating a list of numbers from 1 to 1000. It's a 1000 element list uh, where every number is its index plus 1, essentially. And in here, we're going to compare you know, whether it's quicker to square our values using a list comprehension, using a map function and a list conversion, or using our own function, which is what the square is for over here. But we're going to could go over one at a time. So the first will be our x uh, squared for x in values. So this is list comprehension. If you've never heard of list comprehension before, I'm probably going to make a video about it at some point. I don't know if I covered it in the How to Python series. I don't remember. If I did, it would be in the cards. If I didn't, then there will be a video somewhere about it. But uh, yeah, so this is our code statements. This is the code we're actually going to be running. And we're going to say that we want to run that a thousand times you know this is a relatively decent number we could up it some more but essentially this kind of eliminates any possibility that, uh, any possibility that one execution could just take way longer than others and completely throw off the results because you'll have the other 999 to bring it back into place and then we have the globals so we actually need to use this to pass our values uh through so what we can do is we can pass a dict with the with the name of the global and then the actual variable. I've never tested this, but I believe if you wanted to, you, uh, these two things could actually be different. So if you had something called like, like value list and you wanted to pass it as values, you could do that. I don't know why you would ever really want to. I've never tried it, but you know, I suppose let me know if it works. And we're gonna print T1. And you know, we're gonna run our benchmark just to show that, you know, it prints the time that it took. So in this case, it took 0.1928 seconds to do all this for a thousand values using list comprehension. And then we can copy this, and then we can call this, uh, say, T2. And in this one, say we wanted to compare it with the list of a map where we set the map function uh, to a lambda with x to the power of two, and then we want to run that on every value in values. So these two bits of code do exactly the same thing. 
we just want to know which one's faster. And then we also have this method in here, or this function in here, in our square.py file. So to actually get this into our benchmarking, we need to do things a little bit differently. Uh, so we can copy and paste this again. Uh, like that, but we don't import the you know just the uh, the function into this file. Instead, what we do is we do the setup, and then we do import. Or it'll be from square import square values. I believe it's square values anyway. Is it square list? Sorry, square list. Um, but now uh, this square list uh, function is available within our kind of environment they're creating in the time it. And then we can do score, uh, whoops, list values like that. And we're still passing our globals through. Now you could, if you wanted to, pass the function through. So you could import it in here and then you could pass the function into globals, but there's not really a point in doing that. You know, imports, you would kind of want to do it in the setup really ideally. And then we can print T3 down here. So if you run that now, we can see that in our case, uh, the list comprehension was the quickest, followed by our list map, and then followed by our square list. So we could change some values around. So we can make this, you know, 101, around all these times. And now we find that the square list function is actually quicker, followed by the list comprehension and the list map. We could increase the number of values if we, or the number of iterations if we wanted to. And then we find that in this case, the <laughs> The list comprehension is quicker again, and then, fo then followed by the square list and the list map. So this, <laughs> to be honest, um, these three things all run at pretty much the same speed a lot of the time, so there's not going to be a huge amount of difference. But uh, I did actually run uh, run this where it, uh, this was doing it in place originally. I didn't include it because it was so massively inefficient that it would have taken forever to execute in this video. So that's why I didn't include it. But uh, the timer is actually really useful if you do have an implementation like that and then you find out it's really inefficient. And this is one way you can find out because you have, you know, easy to, you know, set up code. You don't have to like do all these, um, you, you know, you don't have to manually code it every time. You don't have to manually code like time.time dot time and everywhere. You can set the number of iterations here and it will just kind of do it all for you. It's just really nice and honestly, you know, time it is probably the best way to benchmark code in most in instances. It's not always the easiest way to do it. Sometimes just doing, you know, a for loop with time dot time is a little bit easier. Um, but you know, if you have like a small little snippet and you want to compare the the times, then this is a really good way to do it. Now, as I said at the start of the video, we use in Cython to compare the pure Python and Cython implementations. We're going to be using it in future videos as well. And if you're ever unsure of what the fastest way to do things is, then just break it out on the time it function and try it out for yourself. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say in this video. Just a really simple one. You know, time it isn't really that complicated at all. If you found it helpful, then consider liking it to let me know and maybe subscribing if you want to see more videos like it. If you have anything that you want me to cover, then, you know, put it in the comments below. Or if you have any questions about this video, then feel free to do the same. If you fancy supporting the channel a bit more, then you can either join as a member using the join button below or, or pledge on the Patreon. Either way, one pound a month, you could be on this screen like these people. And I will see you next time where we do the number video and then the MyPy uh, C videos. Those videos are supposed to come out this week, but they got a bit delayed uh, by things I'm not going to go into. A lot of it is out of my control, unfortunately. Uh, but those videos will be coming next, so stay tuned for that.